This presentation is for the BCIT Specialty Nursing Course, the Breastfeeding Experience Theory, and SPN 7155. We will discuss the hypoglycemic newborn as well as the decreased maternal milk supply. Using the clinical decision-making framework, we will talk about what hypoglycemia is, the risk factors contributing to hypoglycemia, and the signs and symptoms of hypoglycemia in a newborn. As well, we will talk about treatment for hypoglycemia in the newborn. We will also talk about the risk factors associated and potential causes for a decreased maternal milk supply and how to assess for and recognize a decreased milk supply. Hypoglycemia can be defined as glucose in the blood that is less than adequate to support neurological, organ, and tissue function. This is usually defined by a numerical reading of 4 to 7 from a blood sugar reading. At birth, the maternal source of glucose is cut off when the umbilical cord is clamped. The infant then relies on the mother's breast milk to normalize their blood sugars. Colostrum is especially important during this time. Healthy term infants experience a transient decrease in glucose levels, but hypoglycemic infants experience a decrease in glycogen supply inadequate gluconeogenesis, the making of glucose, or overutilization of glycogen stored during fetal life. Glucose is essential for normal brain function in newborns. Hypoglycemia can be caused by multiple factors, which we will look at next. Some of the risk factors for hypoglycemia in a newborn are a newborn that is large for their gestational age, usually over 4,000 grams, or a newborn that is small for their gestational age, usually under 2,500 grams, prematurity, respiratory distress, hypothermia, a newborn that has become septic or jaundiced. In these more traumatic situations where there is potential perinatal compromise, the newborn's glucose stores are depleted rapidly, causing a hypoglycemic state. Another risk factor for is a newborn who gets a score less than three at the five minute assessment mark during an APGARD assessment. A delayed first feed can also be a risk factor for hypoglycemia, as well as poor feeding in general, which may occur for multiple reasons. One possible reason for poor feeding or inability to breastfeed is a baby who is tongue tied. If the mother has had gestational diabetes or is diabetic, especially type 1, it may also cause hypoglycemia. It is important to note that a newborn who is hypoglycemic may be asymptomatic. In this case, we would only see a low blood sugar reading. A low blood sugar for a newborn is usually classified as less than 2.6 two hours after birth. However, a hypoglycemic newborn may also show one or multiple signs and symptoms. Some of these potential signs and symptoms include jitteriness or tremors, lethargy, apnea or tachypnea, pallor, irritability, poor feeding, temperature instability, especially hypothermia, and potential seizures. Aside from assessing the newborn for the previously mentioned signs and symptoms, in the following days and weeks, we would then continue to assess for signs such as appropriate newborn weight gain. The newborn should gain approximately one ounce per day for the first three months. Although it is normal for the newborn to lose a small amount of weight in the first few days, they should return to their birth weight within two weeks of birth. Another aspect to consider is the newborn's stool. It should change from a dark and sticky meconium to a seedy mustard and yellow around five days after birth. In general, the infant should be having six to 10 wet diapers a day and should be feeding eight to 12 times per day. These are signs the newborn is getting enough nutrition to sustain its metabolic and developmental needs. The most influential factor for maternal milk supply is supply and demand. That means that the amount of milk the mother produces is dependent on how frequently she is feeding her infant and how effective each feed is. If the mother is ending feeds too early, not emptying her breasts completely during feeds, 
feeding from only one breast at a time, supplementing the infant with formula or using pacifiers, or feeding on a schedule as opposed to on demand. These factors can all decrease the amount of breast milk that she will produce. Mothers who have been diagnosed with hypothyroidism, diabetes, or gestational diabetes, or with insufficient glandular tissue may also be at risk for decreased milk supply. Dealing with a hypoglycemic newborn or a mother with a decreased milk supply, or potentially both, the three nursing priorities would be to assess what is causing the problem. Is the newborn hypoglycemic due to maternal risk factors such as those previously mentioned, or does the or due to infant risk factors, or both. We would also focus on stabilizing the newborn's blood sugars and continually assessing to ensure the newborn's blood sugars remain sufficient. The third priority would be to educate the parents about hypoglycemia while continually supporting their needs and encouraging them. In order to assess the cause of hypoglycemia, we would need to do a full assessment of the baby and consider any of the risk factors that may cause or contribute to hypoglycemia. We would then do the same for a maternal assessment, as well as an assessment of the newborn feed. In order to stabilize the newborn's blood sugars, treatment would depend on the cause of the low blood sugar. Some treatment options include having the baby skin to skin, which allows the baby to better regulate their temperature and therefore use less blood sugar. They are also better able to regulate their blood sugar when skin to skin. We would also want to encourage the first feed as soon as possible after birth, as well as encourage exclusive breastfeeding. That is started early and often. Although early and regular breastfeeding is the most effective way to stabilize and maintain the infant's blood sugars, if the infant is incapable of suckling from the breast, breast milk is still the recommended first choice. This can be done by a cup, spoon, dropper, or in some cases, a nasogastric tube. In some cases, it may also be necessary to give the infant glucose by intravenous. In order to support and educate the newborn's parents, we would want to assess the newborn's latch and feed and educate the mom on how to recognize both aspects. This would include promoting skin-to-skin -skin contact, making sure the infant is awake and alert during feeds, watching and listening for, listening for full swallowing sound during feeding, offering both breasts at each feed, and allowing the infant to feed until they naturally are ready to come off the breast. Other signs the infant is getting enough to eat are having six to 10 wet diapers per day, eight to 10 feeds per day, and the appropriate weight gain of, of one ounce per day for the first three months, as well as returning to their birth weight within two weeks. We would also want to educate both parents and ensure that they are able to recognize any potential signs and symptoms of hypoglycemia. In order to promote and increase the mother's milk supply, we could suggest doing breast compressions or pumping in between feeds. We would also want to discourage any use of supplementations such as formula, bottles, or pacifiers, at least until a regular breastfeeding pattern is in place. And finally, we want to ensure that we are answering all the questions the parents have while continuing to support and encourage them. We would then be able to evaluate our treatment by the number of wet and dirty diapers the infant has per day, whether or not the infant's stool has changed from meconium to a mustard yellow by day 5, if the infant is feeding 8 to 12 times per day, watching for the appropriate weight gain and the return of birth weight by the second week, a happy, healthy, and alert baby is also a sign the baby is getting enough to eat. We would also want to consider how mom is feeling and whether or not she is feeling that her breasts are emptied at the end of each feed. I hope that this presentation has helped you to have a better understanding of both hypoglycemia in the newborn and a decreased maternal milk supply. Thank you for listening.